short weeks are both a blessing and a curse. They're great because it means you have football sooner. They're bad because it means my workload goes from 100 to 1,000. So I wanted to get out of film room that you guys wanted to see. And I asked you on Twitter and our Eagles group chat and you all responded the same thing. You wanted to see Jordan Mylata and his progress. And I didn't have time to get to the film last week against the Steelers. So I wanted to revisit his game against the Ravens and see how he did, where the progress has been made and where he's really looking to be forecasted over the next year or so. Like, does this man have franchise tackle potential? Just how wrong are we being proven right now? So buckle up, grab yourself a drink. My name is Liam Jenkins and this is another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we kick into it though guys, of course we've got to announce the winner of our Travis Folgum jersey giveaway. And as promised, the comment with the most likes from that film room will indeed win the jersey. And that man was Andrew Billado who said Travis Folgo. I love that. Great name, man. Shoot us an email, phillysportsnetwork at gmail.com with proof that you're logged into the account. We don't want to give it to some random person and we'll get you a Travis Fulgham jersey sorted. We've also finalised our giveaways on Twitter, so congrats to everyone who won there. But if you still want a chance to win, there are more goodies at hand. All you've got to do... PSN Eagles Nation is a group chat on the app Flick Sports. It is free to join. All you've got to do, link in the description below. Click that, it will download the app to your phone. Join the group. There's over 250 Eagles fans in there right now. Let's get to 300 by the end of Thursday Night Football. And there are always weekly giveaways and competitions in there. But I'll make you guys a promise. All right, if this video is 500 likes, we'll give away a Jordan Mylata jersey to the comment with the most likes. So show your support, turn that thumb blue, let me know your thoughts down below and if you're creative enough, you might just win yourself a jersey. Let's get to the film boys. We're going to start off with this play which was the Jalen Hurts keeper. Now they motion Miles Sanders here, it's going to be a read option look and what the Eagles are going to do is pull both Nate Herbig and Jordan Mylata. So Nate Herbig's responsibility is get into that outside edge. Jordan Mylata has to get to that second level for the linebacker and Ertz is going to crash underneath to try and take away the nose tackle to give Mylata that room. And what we see is that as Mylata turns the corner here, the angle's a bit steep, and I know this is being picky, it is really being picky, but we've got to that level in my Lanta's game where we can be picky, which is a really good thing. There are no longer massive glaring holes in his game. But if he comes out of here and is a little bit steeper, then what you're going to see is him come right up, take on that linebacker, and there'll be a gaping hole for Jalen Hurts. Instead, he kind of widens a little bit, almost blocks Hurts for quite some time. Then by the time he's engaged the block, there's a lot more work for Jalen Hurts to do with the ball. Now in the long run, that's not that bad. You can see it works out well. The Eagles do get a big game. And I know a lot of it is to do with the size of Jordan Mylata and the strides that he's going to take. But as you can see his eyes, like he's already located. Ertz has peeled in and created that lane. At that point, he's got to turn and go. He puts that foot down. You can see almost the loss of balance. He's trying to change direction. Has to get so wide to stop and then try and engage. So it's a smart, conservative way, but I know that if he's just a little bit more set and a little bit more confident over time and he gets that kind of aggression in where he can just get to the second level, lock in and bang. Watching it in full motion, like you can understand what he's doing and why he's been safe to make sure he finishes the block. But overall, I think that could have been a bit tidier. The thing is with Jordan Mylata's run blocking is that it's not a general problem. It's only with work at the second level when he's got a lot of distance to carry and find it. When it's right in front of him, doesn't seem to be the case. Like right here, this is very nearly a touchdown run and a lot of it comes from Mylata's sheer power. So what he's going to do here is chip 93, he's being taken on by Nate Herbig, and then move up to number 48. And the power in which he does this is absolutely unbelievable. You can see him moving with the left shoulder shoulder, push to the left, and then just move squarely, get into the chest of 48, and at that point, I mean, my Lata here has parted the Red Sea for Miles Sanders to run through. He's very unlucky not to get in with the finished product, but what I really love is the end of this play, my Lata finishes it, drives him to the ground, and you're going to see that a lot in this video. He's getting this new ruthless aggression, this sudden tenacity to his game where he's driving people, he's pushing them to the floor, he's finishing on top of them. It's fun to watch. 
But at the end of the day, what we're looking for here is work at the second level. And my Lata still struggles to get the right angle when engaging in a block. And it can often lead to plays like this, which could ultimately be a lot bigger if my Lata can lock into that assignment a bit quicker. Again, this will improve in time. It's not a massive criticism, um, but it's something we need to be aware of and something we can focus on as an area of progression as the season goes on. What really stood out to me from watching this game back was the matchup, and he spent a lot of time against Pernell McPhee, who is a 10-year veteran outside linebacker, and he's not a prolific pass rusher, he's not the heaviest guy, the most explosive guy in the world, certainly towards the tail end of his career, but what he is is a technician, and someone that can use his hands very well, and I think that in this game in particular, my Lata saw more variety of hand usage and more combinations of hands than he's seen before overall and the way he handled them the way he was able to stick through it was really impressive so there he's handling a cross chop like it's absolutely nothing he faces a spin move a little bit later in the game and because of his sheer size is now able to let it roll off his body and then run the ring which is again a key aspect of my Lata's game where he often struggled because of that size we spoke before about him being top heavy and often not having his feet set under him properly which led to pass rushes being able to get around him with relative ease we're not seeing that anymore. Another example here against the same player, almost the same scenario. Hand on the shoulder, drives him around the back of the quarterback. Wentz is able to escape and release a dime downfield. Now I love this plate for a few reasons. The first one is his footwork and the way he's actually moving around the edge now. We spoke before about his kick steps and how much they've improved. Watch the hand usage. We get a really good look at it here. He moves as if he's skiing and you see there's almost his chugging motion where he's thrusting his body around and what this does is keep a center of gravity over him the shoulders over the knees the weight is behind him keeping him upright okay think about you try and push over a tower if the weight's at the back and you're pushing forward it isn't gonna go so when he invites contact like there that 99 tries to swat down there, there's no way that he's gonna get even close enough and if you want to get close enough those long reaching arms of my Lata are gonna get straight into your chest ultimately that doesn't work he tries to get around the edge my Lata can then angle himself well because of that extra little thrust he does to thrust himself into the direction hands on the shoulder and just drive run the ring around the outside put him on the ground again we spoke about that a minute ago put the guy on the ground finish the damn play play till the whistle i love that the ball itself was a big completion to fold him let's talk more about that then let's talk more about this ruthless mentality he's got right here he's going to drive 93 calais campbell into the ground yes he gets help from Nate Herbig and a pile of bodies, but it's that mentality of playing to the whistle and a guy like Calais Campbell, a notable pass rusher, to put him on his ass. That's big. I like that. I love the tenacity we're seeing. This play's really interesting. We're going to see Mylar to come out of his stance and pick up a pass rusher. There's a bit of confusion. As you can see, the Ravens almost try this twist where 45 is going to try and sneak inside and come over the top. Can't quite get the angle right. That's going to leave Mylar to, though, in a bit of drama. And what we see is that with one arm, literally one arm hooked onto number 99, just look at this one arm around him. And he's driving him again and still ends up putting him on the ground. It's that same thing. It's just a drive to finish the play. You've got someone trying to crash between two people. Herbig then has to devote all his attention to the twisting defensive end. And what you see is just Jordan Mylata with one arm locked in, like some sort of wrestling move, just drive all his weight through that left side of his body. But this is the play you all want to see, the one that went kind of viral on Twitter. Jordan Mylata on a fumble by Carson Wentz, storms into the defender, hones in like the rugby player he is, and drives that ball out, and then sees the defender getting up and tosses him back to the floor. Optimus Prime behavior. I don't know where this has come from, but my Lata has got this swagger about him, this franchise swagger, and I am living for it. And he's still using that freakish size to his advantage, as I think he always will. Like, he is, of course, going to depend on that. But instead of it being the backbone of his game where there is nothing else, we're now seeing it just being a part of his game where there is so much else to offer. The linebacker here is going to drop back into coverage, leading my Lata without a man assignment. So what he does is deliver a devastating devastating blow to the nose tackle who goes flying across the offensive line it's unbelievable when you watch this at normal speed just a thump in the shoulder and the power in which he goes flying across the field is unreal i don't know who made my lads angry this week or if someone broke up with him but watch number 92 here because he's going to get carried halfway across the field by my lads and the play's going to die and he just doesn't stop 
fact this happened all game is so much fun to watch. Like, on this play, he's going to drive 93 back, not once, but twice just for the fun of it. Like, why not? That was the one sack he actually allowed because there's definitely a correlation here between Mylata when he struggles and Mylata when he's strong. And you'll notice that Malsanis is in the backfield, he's to his side, and that is sort of going to limit the amount of explosiveness and depth he can gain on that kick step. So we'll see him here almost stutter a little bit. So there, that's a much narrower stance. So if you compare it to Jack Driscoll on the other side, for instance, who's much wider, it's a good comparison. But then he gets narrower, like the legs shake. Like, you see that he does his little shimmy to try and square up. Because he realizes number 90 is going to try and use this stab to get on that inside shoulder. So he addresses it well, but you look at that there is no base to build on. And he gets beaten here very easily, pushed to the side. At that point, that's free reign for number 90. He's in for the sack. But Mylata does seem to struggle a bit more when there's a running back there because he knows he can't leap back in the way he normally would. It's not a condensed set. It's much more of a, a square a leap. And it seems to just catch him off guard a little bit. It, you only see it happen a few times a game, especially when Miles is in pass protection, but it's something worth monitoring moving forward. But overall, I'm really impressed with Jordan Mylata. And more than anything else, it's the confidence, the aggression, and the swagger that he's playing the game with. Again, this is someone that is so new to football that has just minimal experience under his belt, and he's coming off two games against two of the top defenses in the NFL, where you would think that if I'd have given that description, you... Well, you'd think that if I'd have given you that description and said, hey, is that Jordan Mylata or Jamon Brown? Which description does that fit? You would easily say it's Jamon Brown who played like someone that had never seen a football before in his life. Like, I think I could have actually done a better job at guard than Jamon Brown. Mylata's holding his own, and I think he is some way off being a franchise starter. I wouldn't go in and put him ahead over Dillard on the stock chart just yet, but I do think there is significant progress being made, and the more he has this year, the quicker he's going to come along. And I'll tell you what, if he can start being a factor in the run game at the second level, we're going to have a menace on our hands. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. From myself, Liam Jenkins, thank you as always for watching this video. If you do want to chat with us, don't forget Flick Sports. PSM Eagles Nation is the place to be. I'll see you soon.